Hello and welcome to Dickinson's Real View. On this show, I help members of the public to get the very best price for their antiques and valuables. You get a choice. Sit down with one of our regular deals. Now they're going to try and tempt you with a cash offer on the table today. 50 pounds. Oh, come on. You can do better than that. If I don't think that's enough money, I'm going to say reject that offer. Have a gamble. Go to auction. We what? might just get you a little bit more money there. At a thousand pounds. I shall be on hand at all times to help and advise. Today, the show comes to you from Macclesfield in Cheshire. There's a great crowd of people have turned up this morning. They're smiling. They've brought along their treasures. They want to do business. You know why they're here. They want to walk away with the real deal. The doors have opened and the early birds are flocking in. Our first seller of the day is Carol, who's brought along a silver scent bottle. She's got a good reason to part with it. So how did you come to own this and why are you selling it? Well, 20 years ago, um, it was bought as a birthday gift by my now ex-husband. Anyway, I'm decluttering and I want to get rid of lots of stuff like that. So Your ex-husband gave mm, it to you, mm, so it doesn't have sentimental has value. Has none um, whatsoever. <laughs> I can see that. But it's a pretty thing, it's isn't pretty. it? It's um, pretty. You've been enthusiastic with the cleaning at some stage because what has happened is the hallmarks on the side yeah. have been rather worn mm. away. We can just make out that it's Birmingham and it looks like 1890 something. 1898, I believe. Is it? Beautiful thing, nice silver mount, beautifully facet cut both on the stopper and on the sides, and it all seems in lovely condition apart from the slightly rubbed marks. No, it's nice. It would have been part of a whole dressing table set mm. originally. Mm. There would have been perhaps a pair of these, and there might have been a mirror and some brushes and yeah. all those nice a, a tray, a little mm. ring stand, mm. all. all in the same style. I mean, it's pretty. It's got little Rococo scrolls. This is unusual. I really like the... the facet cutting. Yeah, it is nice, isn't it? And mm. it's got, between the facets, you may notice little stars, which yeah. are quite nice. Little rubbing on the stopper, but it's got a bit of age. I mean, it's, it's a nice thing. I like it. Pretty. What is a nice scent bottle like that worth? Is it worth 50 pounds? It's worth more, isn't it? I think so. A little bit more? A little bit more. A little bit more. £60? £70? A little bit more? I think a little bit more. £80? You're looking quite happy it's now. sort of putting a little smile, but I'd like just a little bit more. Like more? Mm. What about another ten? £90? And here's David, he'll give us some... OK, so... Advice. Am I right in saying this was given to you as a present by your ex-husband? That's right. Why haven't you smashed it? <laughs> I've been tempted. <laughs> 80 to 120 is what they're saying. That probably sounds about right to me. And there's 90 there, David. There is. I don't know. Well, it's a close call. We've got to let David make a little bit of a profit. So uh, I'm going to say... Not a bad offer. It might be worth another tenner, but I'll, I'll leave it with you to work on him. I'll work on another five. I think £90 is a good price for that. I, I do, because the marks are a little bit rubbed. It's very pretty. Usually these little scent bottles are 50 or £60. This mm. one's a bit extra because it's got this nice facet cutting, which is why I've gone a bit fair, I think. I was going to say generous, but fair. He's back again. I'll try and turn the tables a little bit to help David on this occasion. Perhaps I was a little bit harsh. £90 is not a bad price. He can be yes. nice to me, just sometimes. He... Yes, yes. I think that is a fair price. Should we shake hands? I think we shake hands. What are you going to do with the money? I haven't decided yet. Come on, tell me. Probably a nice meal out. I see, with... Somebody... Possibly number three. Really? Possibly. You heard it here first. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> well, it could be third time lucky for Carol, but will David have any luck selling the scent bottle on? We'll find out later. 
Now, let's head over to Tony Gearing, where another David is looking to find out more about his items. I brought some silverware along today, and I have no idea of its origin or the price of it, and I'm just hoping that it's worth something tangible. Hopefully, we'll be able to do a deal today. Here's hoping, David. Tony, you better get your notes at the ready. And what have you bought for me today? Silver collection, uh, my partner inherited. Okay. Um, don't know a lot about them other than we found them in a in a loft that they've been there 30 years or so. So uh, hoping you can tell me a bit more. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, it looks mostly Victorian. It's nice. Some of it's there's some nice cresting on it. You don't know anything about the cresting no. or. Don't know where they've originated from. They've been really, really well used. I mean, silver's quite soft, but yeah, the wear is 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 really what's killed the set there with the forks. Yeah. The value in all of this, sadly, is to be melted down. Really? It really is. Mm. So really, it's just an offer for the scrap value of it. Okay. Let's see what I've got in my pocket. Twenty. 40, 60, 80, 100, 20, 40, 60, 80, 200, 20, 40, 60, 80, 20, 40, 60, 80, 400. It's getting closer to you. Is it getting closer? I'm, I'm, I'm imagining now it must be worth more than I thought. So I think you probably can go a bit further. <laughs> I'm going to go another one more on that. 20, 40, 60, 80, 100. So there's 500 pounds there. So you look a bit yeah. surprised with the value of that. Um, surprised because I don't know what I'm dealing with really. Okay, well, just before you say anything, let me tell you about this flatware. It's late 18th, early 19th century. Now, six to 700 is the general estimation. But, believe it or not, there's £800 in scrap there. Really? So, surely it's worth 650 quid this parcel, and 150 quid profit to a dealer. It needs to okay. be perhaps another £150 to make it worth his while, but that's what I think it's worth. <laughs> you need to get your hand in your pocket. <laughs> Well, I knew that. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see what else we got here. I'm going to make it six. I think you're going to have to stick a little bit more. You're going to have to go to auction. Um, I'm going to auction, but thanks very much. Dave, it's been a pleasure. Thank Good you. luck with that. Okay. I'm sure you'll do very well. Now, were you right to take the gamble of going to auction, David? We're about to find out. On the dealer's day, you were offered £600 by Tony R. Dealey. You said, no, I'm going to gamble and take it to auction because there is £800 in scrap value. The estimate is 650 to 750 Are we going to do any better than the 600 you turned down? I'm hoping so. Well, I'm hoping so, too. It's coming up here now. I can start the bidding at... Six hundred and twenty pounds. Take forty if you like. Six twenty. The reserve six fifty. At six forty in the doorway. Six sixty here. Six eighty in the doorway. Past the reserve. At six hundred and eighty pounds. Any advance on six hundred and eighty pounds? The bid's just outside the door. Six ninety. Do you want six ninety? Six ninety. Seven hundred in the doorway. At seven hundred pounds in the doorway. At seven hundred pounds. Another twenty anywhere. At seven hundred. We sell then. OK, £700. Yeah. I detect a smile on your really? face. You are thinking to yourself, well, that's not bad. You turn down £600. Yeah. The problem sometimes when you come to the sale room is the commission. Yeah. Now, 600 was the offer from Tony. It made 700 in the sale room, but making a quick calculation, I make that 595, yeah. which is five quid shorter than the offer from our dealer Tony on the dealer's day. Are you satisfied? No. Any idea what you might do with this cash? Mm, yeah. <laughs> he's not saying, but he knows what he's going to do with it. Uh... Either way, it's the real deal. Next, we're racing over to Janice Kehoe's table, where Dougie's six-car mascots are causing a stir. 
the Duke and auctioneer Peter Ashburn are looking on as one piece in particular has caught their eye. Douglas, which are the rare mascots? Uh, that's a rare one. Uh, that's a very early Rolls Royce one, that yes. one. Yes. What about this one? That, that one's a, a very early, it's, it's a bronze one. Yeah. Um, She's got a registered design number on the back. That's right, yeah. That's um, the numbers on the bottom. Yeah. It would have looked lovely sitting on the front of a car, that one. Yeah. Yeah. Now, this poor girl, <laughs> she's been a bit in the wars, hasn't she? Yeah. She's had a hard life, I think. Yeah. Now, what about this seal one? <laughs> it's very nice. I don't think this is bronze, though, is it? It's chromed. I think it's, it's chromed. It's chromed on the outside. I think so. I'm not certain. But it's a nice Art Deco style yeah, piece. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. probably French, I would think. <laughs> yeah. And this one, is this from a Mercedes? Mercedes, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's an early Mercedes on the cap. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then we've got the Spirit of Ecstasy. Yeah, that, that's a very early Rolls Royce one. You can tell by the fitting on the underneath. By the fitting underneath. It's quite old, yeah. Ah, right. <laughs> and how long have you had them, Dougie? Uh, I've had, well, I've got a lot of them, just picked some of the best out, you yeah. know. Do you collect them? Uh, I buy and sell them, collect yeah. them, yeah. Now, Peter, what about the sale room, your sale room in particular, for car mascots? Are they popular um, as, as much as they used to be, or have they dropped away a bit? They've dropped back a little bit. There is still demand for them, but perhaps not quite as much as there was. There are, it's obviously the Rolls Royce, the Spirit of Ecstasy, there's a Mercedes there. The Leisure, I think, is fabulous. The bronze. Yes, that's good. The lady, it? yes. Yeah, that's very, impressive. Very impressive. Very stylish. Very, very stylish. Yeah. When are you going to estimate these? There's six of them in total. I think you're looking at sort of 350 to 450 for the group would be about the right auction estimate for them. That sounds about right to me. The independent values, they've also gone at 350 to 450. Janice looks to me like she could be a potential buyer. Let's see what she puts on the table. Do you know what you want for them? I've got a good idea. You've got a good idea? Yeah. OK. Well, i better put some money down then. Right, love you. OK, yeah. let's see what we can do. Let's go 20, 40, 60, 80, 100. 20, 40, 60, 80, 200. I think you're worth more than that. You're worth more than yeah. that. Um, I'll put a bit more down and we'll see what we can do. So five puts, another £60 pounds down. We're at 260 now. No, they're worth more than that. They're, they're worth more yeah. than that. Peter, £260, pounds. what's your thoughts on that? I think it's a bit short at the moment. I think there's more money to be had than that. I think I agree. I think they're worth a little bit more than that. I need to get in there and tell our seller, who's obviously a collector, they're worth more than that. Would you like to ask David? Yeah. Yeah, can do, yeah. Paul Douglas, there's, a, there's an interesting selection here. Yes. Independent <laughs> value is an auction here. They're both in unison. They are saying these should drive away at 350 to 450. And what we have on the table at the moment is 260 pounds. I think it's a bit on the light side at the moment. But Janice may not have finished yet. She still may be driving away with these. Thanks, <laughs> David. <laughs> OK. Well, let's see if we can do the wheel deal. Yeah. So. <laughs> OK, if I put 320. A bit more than a that. A bit more than that. Um, I'm almost at my limit there. I'll put another 20 down, I'll go to 340, and that's it, I'm afraid. Can, can you not put one more? No, I can't. I can do a deal with one more. <laughs> I just feel at 340, you would have to get about 400 at the auction room. Yeah. And um, that's as far as I'm happy to go. And you have a little bit more. Let's see, if I put 345. Make it a tenner. <laughs> oh, don't! <laughs> so if I take that five away yep. and put down a ten, do we have a deal? We have a deal. Oh, you're a hard man, Dougie. Thank, <laughs> Thank you, you very, very much. much. <laughs> They're so stylish and so Art Deco. I'm really pleased with them, and I hope I do well with them. Oh, Dougie good. sure did I drive a hard them. bargain there. Find out if he's left Janice any room for a profit later on. Coming up, there's a fight going on at David's table. I, I, I think that's quite sporting. Sporting. We're not going to get into fisticuffs, are we? 
but who will deal the knockout blow? Welcome back to Dickinson's Real Deal from Macclesfield. Let's crack on. Adji's brought along a silver box, which has got Karen Delmeny all excited. Adji, a Hi. pleasure to welcome you to the show. A particular pleasure, because I'm loving what you've bought. Right. So how did it come to be in your possession? Uh, it actually belongs to my uncle, uh, one of the uh, British Army officers. He uh, uh, given him as a present. So was that. this given in India? Yeah. Is that, and, and then it was brought back over here, yeah, yeah. and then it was left here. Yeah. Oh, what a lovely story! <laughs> it's a rather lovely um, silver, probably a trinket box. And if we open up the lid, um, we can expose the inside. And you'd, it could have been for cufflinks or just little rings or bits of jewellery or anything really. We've got this beautiful silver work going on around the edging there on the border and this lovely PK work um, going on here. And do you know what this material is here? Um, it's don't. tortoise shell. Yeah. Uh, we refer to it as tortoise shell. It's actually turtle shell, but it is genuine um, tortoise shell because quite often um, the French tried to replicate it and it was some form of plastic, but this is genuine. And it is a really, really nice quality thing. What a lovely thing to be left to you. And you're sure you don't want to keep it? Uh, Time to go? Yeah, I just want to sell it. Yeah. All right, OK. I expect you know roughly what you don't want, do you? <laughs> you? You've got that knowing <laughs> smile. OK. 50, 100, 120, 140, 160 pounds. That's a bit lower than I expected, actually. Seriously? Yeah. Damn. <laughs> um, I hope I'm not too much lower. Mm, it's a bit far away, actually. Oh, is it? Yeah. Mm. D David, you really don't want to come in on this deal. It's just, you just wouldn't like it. Before he comes in, there's 180 on the tape. 180, David. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Let me tell you, there are two opinions here. 140 to 160, 150 to 250. You have already 180 on the table, so you'd have to get over 200 pounds. You can gamble if you wish. Our eyes are glazing over now. <laughs> but I think on the day, 180 is not bad. Ask you for a little bit more. No, it's a good price. You've got to get £220 to get back to that auction. You're not getting the full effect of this. Aji, look. Look, £180. £180. That's a bit lower. Would another five a swing it? £200? No, because I, I, I won't get out on it on £200. Right, as a tenner, £190. Have we got a deal? Yeah, 190 is uh, not a bad uh, offer, so I just need the money as well, so a uh, deal for 190. Got a deal? Yeah, God, deal you for kept me waiting there, then. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you just notice when I really want something, and David always knows when I really want it. I really like that, and I got it in the end, really pleased. You can't hide anything from the Duke, Karen. Across the dealer's den, Jamie has brought in his prize boxing signatures and is ready to put up a fight for a good deal. Hi, Jamie. You're obviously a boxing buff or an enthusiast. Historian. A historian. This is a hobby rather than a commercial enterprise. It's a passion more than anything, isn't it? Yes. I like that. I like uh, to hear I mean, that word. Good thing. I mean, you've got some interesting bits and pieces here. I, I notice you've got a letter. Yes. Uh, and this is the letter you wrote. Yes, to Sir Henry Cooper. OK, so you wrote to him saying who you are, that you're a heavyweight boxing historian. And he very sweetly wrote back saying that he thought Ali would have beaten him yeah. um, if it had gone on for a bit longer. Yep. And it's signed Sir Henry. That's the one. Henry. God bless him. That's fantastic. And what's this signature here? That's James Quick Tillis. Tell me about him. He was the first man who took the mighty Mike Tyson the distance in the 80s. Wow. And then you've got this... Very nice photograph of Muhammad Ali. Yes, I have. Signed at the top. Yep. 
Now, I've had a very good look at that signature, and I'm... Skeptical. I've looked at it, and it seems to me, under a lens, <clears throat> that that looks like a facsimile signature. We but can I agree hear, to differ. But I hear what you're okay. saying. I you mean, know, there we go. No problem. So how can you part with these? I mean, this lovely response you got Well, you from... see, I'm getting married at the end of the year oh, to right, my okay. fiancé. Yeah, so, um, oh, that's nice. Every little helps, and you've got to give up things when you, you know, feel yeah. the one you love, and uh, Absolutely. there you go. <laughs> Good for you. I mean, I'll... I'll have a go. Get some 50s out, Dave. I don't know what I'm... <laughs> 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 pounds. Oh, come on. You can do better than that. I'll go 60. That's no good. Come it's on. no good. You, you think it's worth that's... a lot more, do you? Well, there's three items there. That's 20 quid an item. Ah. Come on, let me I'll do... I'll have another tenner, and that's no, me. Oh, come on. I've closed 70 that's... pounds. I... I... I, I think that's quite sporting. Sporting. We're not going to get into fisticuffs, are we? Oh, no. here's David. He, he'll help us. Um, what's interesting about this, the independent values and the auctioneer, they've both gone for 50 to 80 pounds. Now, that indicates to me that they don't believe in the Muhammad Ali signature. Because if they did, I think that on its own has got to be certainly over 100 pounds and might be a couple of hundred quid. But you could go to auction, you have nothing much to lose. Yeah. Someone might think that is right. And so maybe it's worth a gamble at auction. I wouldn't deceive you. I think yeah. you're a nice bloke and everything. Uh, that is the genuine article. But yeah. It's up to you to believe well, at the I, end of the day. I tell you what's gonna what's gonna happen. No problem. Is the market is gonna decide. No problem. You know? Have you been to a auction house before? I never have, no. Oh, good good experience. David will take care of you, keep an eye on you, make no sure problem. that you do well and look after your interests. I think Fantastic. you'll enjoy the event. Fantastic. A pleasure. All right. Nice meeting you. A nice pleasure. man. Thank you. He didn't believe it was genuine. I'm different, but saying that, I haven't got an eye like he has. I don't think it's the money it was, you know, it should have been. But we'll see. Well, Jamie seems confident they're real. Let's see what the sale room thinks. You turn down £70 from David Ford. The reserve is very modest, 50 quid. I'm going to say, why didn't you take the 70 quid off David Ford? I think this is going to go through the roof, David. OK. Sting like, um... B, my B. friend. I was thinking... I was thinking of the butterfly bit. OK, here we go. Well, I can start the bidding at £70. At £70, I'm bid. They half like it. That indicates to me. Any advance? On 70. Take five. At £70, you're bidding up £5, £75, £80, £85, £90. I think the room is saying we like it and we think it's all right. £90 at £90. Anybody got £5 at £90? Any more quickly? It's a commission bid at £90. You're out in the room. At £90 then, all done at £90. OK, £90. There was interest. Some people are prepared to speculate. Um, and they've gone up to £90. What's your reaction to the result? I thought it'd be a bit more, but, you know, can't grumble. OK. There is commission to deduct, which drops it down to about 76 quid and a few pence. Satisfied? Yeah, 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 yeah that'll do. Not a knockout, but it is the real deal after all. Our next seller has brought along a right royal piece of maritime memorabilia. Hello, I'm Tony. Dawn. Dawn, lovely to meet you, Dawn. You too. And what have you bought here for us today? It's actually my mum's item. Um, it's a hat from the, the Royal Britannia. She used to work in a pub back in the 70s in Falmouth in Cornwall. Right. And the, the ship was in the dock and he was in the pub and he got drunk and left it behind. I was going to say, it's probably a drunken sailor. He couldn't come <laughs> back for it because they sailed early the next morning, so my mum kept it. So you probably had some um, deck mopping to do for the next, for Very the rest lightly. of the journey, yes, yes. Well, I don't know, does it look good on me? Not quite my size, I don't think. Mm. Hello, sailor. <laughs> well, should we get down to some money? Yes, please. I'm having the foggiest what it's worth, but I quite like it, actually. Right, let's have a look and see what we got in here. 
Ten. It's a nice start. Nice start. <laughs> well, I'm going to double it and make it 20. I think she was looking at more than that. Really? For a hat? Mm -hmm. Well, I'm, I'm going to stick to my guns here, to my royal guns. Well, just before, in case you heard a... <laughs> it was me whistling, Tony. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me tell you, 40 to 60 really? is what they're saying. I think 50 to 70 really? on the other estimation. 20 pounds, I think, is a bit on the low size. Mm. So I'm going to say it's worth 40 quid. The story is fantastic. And by the way, <laughs> you look fantastic in it, mate. <laughs> Thank you, David. <laughs> Oh, well, um, go on, I'll give you another 24 for the story. If you're happy with that, of course. Can't push you a little bit further? No, I'm going to stick to my royal guns. OK. Lovely, cool. Thank Thanks you. very much. Thank you. Hopefully I'll make a profit. David seems to think so, so we'll see. Yo ho ho, Tony. We will indeed, later in the show. Also coming up... Jackie, sorry, but that's me done. I, I, can, I can feel a presence, and here it comes. <laughs> but what is the Duke up to? Welcome back to Dickinson's Real Deal. Here in Macclesfield, sellers are still coming through the doors, looking for the best deals on their valuables. Next up is Vanda. Today I brought in a matchbox cover. I know very little about it. Um, I'm just interested to find out what the crest is on the front and see if someone can tell me how old it is. If it's silver, I assume it is. It's got the correct, um, marks on the back. So hopefully finding out more about it. Well, Janice is your lady. Let's see if she can enlighten you. It's got a really interesting motif on the front. Um, do you know what it is? Um, no, I don't. OK. Well, it's uh, representative of the Order of the Garter. Right. Which is um, the order that the Queen is responsible for. Right. And it was, it's, a, it's the most ancient order, I think. It's, it's 1348 it was founded. Really? By Edward the Confessor. And how long have you had it? Um, 25, 30 years. Yeah. And where did you get it? Um, a grand, me and mother-in-law gave it to me. Yeah. So it's been in the family a fair quite while. A while. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And it's it's a nice piece. It's hallmark silver, hallmarks on the back. Yeah. And it's Birmingham 1921. Really? That's old. It it is quite old. old. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. old. There is a maker's mark in the corner of Edini Brothers. It's a little rubbed, but um, it's a nice piece. Good. Right, well, let's see what we can do. So we start off 20, 25 pounds. How about that? No. 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 Am I a long way away? Um, fair way. OK. Fair way. Right, well, we'll go see what we can try a little bit more. We take that one away and put a brown on there. That's no. Bit more. No. Uh, if I put the green one back as well, that's 35. That's only nearly one every year that I've had it ish. Well, it scraps at 40 pounds. You put Go on, bit then. More. one more, and that's final. So if I take 15 away and put 20 down, do we have a deal, Vanda? Yes, we do. Brilliant. Yes, we do. Thank Thanks. you very much. Thank indeed. you. Thank you. A bit apprehensive when she put 20, 25 pounds on the table. I thought, no, it's got to be worth more than that. I paid more than I anticipated for that lovely matchbox. Um, I've paid exactly the scrap value and um, I will try and sell it on and make a little bit of money. We're joining Karen now on some unusual building blocks have landed on her table. Jackie, thank you for bringing these in. You've brought in your toys, I see. <laughs> <laughs> where have these come from? Under the stairs. Under the stairs, that where they've been hidden. Mm. So they're something that come down the family. Yes, they were my mother's. 
They were your mother's. Mm. They were bought for a little girl, do you think? I don't really know. We just They were just always there at my mum's and my mum said they were hers. She's been very careful with them because from what I can see, um, these very, and they're, they're little tiny bricks, aren't they? Like mm. reconstituted bricks. And they're pretty much intact. And you'd have thought as a child's toy that loads of them would have got mm. lost over the years. So let's have a little investigate. From what I can see, I believe they're German. And if you look on the back, because it's in 10 different languages, then that would indicate it goes to at least 10 different countries. So that's quite amazing. I mean, this is very scuffed on, on the front, but um, with a little bit of TLC, the form of that and the shape and the colours, that will come up really nice. And these are fascinating too, because these are illustrations of all the different designs that you could possibly do. So when was your mum a child? Can we sort of go back, or did they go back before her, do you think? She was born in 1904. I think these were actually bought for her because I'm sure they're sort of between 19, say, 04 and 1910, somewhere around there. Mm. Um, so they're probably bought for her as a child then. Difficult thing to value, isn't it? Have you got any idea? No, not really. No? Oh, okay. 20, 40, 60, 70, 80, 100 pounds. I did think they might be worth a little bit more. Did you? Mm. I hope so. <laughs> um, right, I'm going for my tenors now. Uh, 110 pounds. How close am I? Fairly close. What, a tenors close? Because that's about it. Perhaps another 20. No, I'll go another 10. I'll swap that tenor and I'll put 20 down. And then, Jackie, sorry, but that's me done. I can feel a presence, and here it comes. <laughs> Bringing it in as we speak. I can only describe this as a Victorian Lego set. A extraordinary. I can tell you that the estimation was 80 to 120. <sighs> Smug, she can be <laughs> when she wants to be. Could it bring more? It's a gamble, I think, if you went to auction. I think Karen has pitched it right. She can take it to one of her fairs and people will come around and think, blimey, that's unusual. I may have a go at that. I'm going to say, not a bad offer. So, you've heard what David's had to say. I bet you're going to take more money now, aren't you? Yeah, I bet you are. We've got a deal. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jackie. <laughs> Slightly worried I might have paid too much. And they're heavy, because the estimate was only about £80. Let's hope I get out on them. We'll find out how you do later, Karen. Also coming up, a classy item for a classy dealer. This is something I really like. It, it's just quality. But will David put down a quality bid? Three fifty. Carry on. We're coming to the end of a busy day in Macclesfield and we've had some fantastic items through the doors. Now, our David is a sophisticated gent, so this last item might be just his thing. What have you brought us, Jonathan? Brought my granddad's fob watch with a chain. Um, it's been in the family for years and I'm hoping to get some uh, good money for it. We hope you do too. What a nice watch. Thank you. So what's the story? Uh, I mean, where did you get it and why are you selling it? I got it off my father. Um, he passed away in 2004. Just before he passed, he, uh, he gave me this, uh, this watch and chain. And it's, it's stuck away in a drawer. I uh, never see the light today. You don't get it out, put it on so, with the waistcoat and... No, don't wear waistcoats anymore. My grandfather, who, who owned it, according to my father, he remembers him walking on the pub with it. Uh, well, they were ago. all the fashion, weren't they? You, they know, were you had the waistcoat, the watch, the fob on the other end, mm -hmm. usually a seal on it or something like that. Mm. I like it, all ticking away, which is okay. a good sign. By Waltham, good American makers. Um, and looking inside here, mm -hmm. it's all 375 standard, which is nine carat nine gold. Nine carat. Mm -hmm. uh, the face is nice and clean, which is good to see, because sometimes these watches get cracked. I noticed that the Albert, the gold Albert, 
which is what this bit is called, yeah. is also gold. Mm -hmm. And very nicely, it's actually hallmarked nine karat gold on every link, which oh, is lovely. Right. Is that and something he, they did then? Was well, that? it's just a nice sign of quality. You know, sometimes they're not hallmarked on every mm -hmm. link. And then you've got a little half sovereign here, which dates... 1902. So it's Edwardian, mm -hmm. 1902. Edward VII, I believe. Yes, that's right. So, it's sitting in a drawer. You don't use it anymore. Nope. So you think you'll sell it. If the price is right. If the price is right. That's very important, <laughs> isn't it? This is something I really like. I think it's a beautiful watch. It's Good. in lovely condition. Okay. It's nice having a little half sovereign. It, it's just quality. Okay, lovely. So let's get some money out and see what we can do. There's 50, 100, 150. Have you got some idea what you want for it? I have. 200, 250, 300. Carry on. Carry on. 350. Carry on. 400. Not there yet. Not yet yet? Not there yet. 450 pounds, I've sort of stopped at it. Still not enough. Here's David, he's going to give us some input. Well, let me tell you what the independent valuers and the auctioneer say. They say around about 5 to 550. 450 is on the table. 550 in the sale room, take away 50%, would bring you kind of down to 460. I'm going to say, let's try and persuade David to try and give you a little bit more speak to Dave, you might be able to do a deal without too much pain. Yeah, I mean, that, David, that's mm. all good stuff. I will go the extra mile a bit. There's another £20, making it £470. How do you feel about that, John? I think we'll have a deal like that. What are you going to do with the money? I'm going to give it to the wife, and I'm sure she'll find a good use for it. Well, that's improvements. OK. Hopefully. So you're going to spend it on your nice home? We're going to house John, improvements, yes. great. Thank you very much. Thank I you, love David. meeting you. Jonathan's happy, but can the same be said for our dealers? The sellers have really made them dig deep today, and they've spent £1,300. Can they turn their buys into a healthy profit? After a hard deal with Dougie, Janice paid a whopping £350 for the car mascots. They're so stylish and so Art Deco. I'm really pleased with them. But she's yet to find a buyer. Come on, Janice, what about the silver matchbox? I paid more than I anticipated for that lovely matchbox. Um, I paid exactly the scrap value. But instead of scrapping it, it caught the eye of a collector. Karen dug deep and paid £190 for that silver trinket box. But she only sold it for the same price she paid. She had her fears about the Victorian building blocks. Slightly worried I might have paid too much. She needn't have fretted, she sold them for £150. David Ford started off slowly, only paying £90 for the silver scent bottle. Just a bit different, nice thing. But you still haven't sold it, David. You did redeem yourself, however, by turning the biggest spend of the day. There's another £20, making it £470. I think we'll have a deal like that. Into the well biggest done. profit. Great. Well done. Thank you, David. That just leaves Tony, who only spent a measly £40 on the Royal Yacht Hat. He only broke even when he sold it at auction, so maybe he should have kept it. Hello, sailor. <laughs> We've had a great day. Plenty of atmosphere. Buying, selling, just what I like to see. Don't forget to join me, David Dickinson, next time. Dickinson's Real Deal. Bye for now.